Hello and welcome to your Astrology and Spirituality Overview for Saturday the 31st of October and of course today it is the full moon or should I say blue moon or should I say hunter moon and of course it's Halloween as well so we're going beyond the veil so Elisa's got black on and a series of moons on her t-shirt and I've got some uh, some uh, warming red so the story re behind this particular blue moon, a blue moon comes when we have two full moons in the same month. So on the first day of this month, we had a full moon in Aries, and this one is in Taurus. But it's embracing the very restless, disruptive potentially, and rebellious energy of uh, Uranus. And Uranus isn't particularly happy in the sign of Taurus, gonna be here till 226, and it's really shaking up our relationship with the earth which of course Taurus is an earth sign and it's very much to do with the foundations the sign of Taurus it's to do with the base that we build uh, things on and that has come under a lot of pressure not just with Covid but environmentally as well so this full moon is in opposition to the sun in the very transformational sign of Scorpio which is about deep dive it's about the things that we may be resisting in terms of letting go of or perhaps coming to an acceptance that we're not going to get what we want from a situation or it could be that something we have been committed to, we've lost that passion and it needs to make way to create fresh energy to bring something new and exciting in. And Uranus is a very exciting, quick moving, but as I said before, disruptive energy. So I think when it comes to the overall uh, zodiac we're talking about houses two and eight so house two very much about everyday resources and self-worth house eight where the sun is is about transformation and so i think there could be some expenses that come up unexpectedly but there can also be some financial opportunities that show themselves but when uranus is in the mix we often have to make very snappy decisions and be prepared to be flexible now, if you'd like to find out how this will impact on you in greater detail for your zodiac sign, we we'll pop the link to my Halloween deep dive video beneath this video. Alisa, <laughs> <laughs> what cards have you chosen today? Well, considering it's Halloween and we, uh, this time of year, spiritually, it said that the, the veil to the other side is thinner, which really just means that we are more intuitive, we're more in tune with maybe past over loved ones, the sensitivity can come up, we may feel a bit restless or sleepless, but overall it's quite an exciting energy. And uh, so I thought with that we'd use the uh, Angel Dreams Oracle cards. Um, to see what subconscious message comes up for us this Halloween. Okay, so we're giving them a good shuffle. Ooh, okay, that one. So the card that comes out is Daydream. It's quite funny this. It says, imagination, allow your mind to wander, quiet time. Often, um, a lot of us when we were in school, I know myself, um, I used to get told off quite a lot for daydreaming or looking out of the window because it was just so easy for my mind to just wander off into another world. You have got an exceptional imagination though. I, I thank you, <laughs> that's really kind. Um, but I do love to daydream. And if I don't have that time in the day to we just do both wander too, off. Huh? Because I've got Neptune yeah, conjunct Jupiter well. in Scorpio. So I have a, a great need to just go off into my own little world. Yeah, we find like our separate rooms and we just, you know, maybe half an hour or even an hour sometimes. Time just morphs away and it's like, hello. Yeah. Do you live here? Do you live here too? Um, but do you know what? Nice to meet you. Some of us need that time, that space just to reset, just to realign. Particularly if we're doing any kind of work that is very focused, uh, very practical, very detailed. Giving ourselves that time to just imagine, wonder, daydream, be a bit childlike in that way, um, vision things for our future. Don't be hard on yourself if an hour goes by. Have that extra long bath tonight if you want it. So even if something dramatic does happen with Uranus, you're saying don't just get so caught up with the practicalities of that Taurus energy. Mm -hmm. If you need to sort of think, okay, maybe I've got a flex here, maybe around my point of view, maybe something I've held uh, quite dear in terms of an attitude, 
because Taurus and Scorpio energy very much to do with stability, quite resistant to change. But if we do need to change, then embrace our imagination and think, well, do you know, sometimes change is as good as a rest. And even if we do, there is part of many of us that do like routine. If change does come, imagine, really imagine, just how magical a change could really be. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us for this Halloween special. Um, as Patrick said, if you would like to check out his deep dive, that will be in the description box beneath this video. And also, I'd be totally honoured, well, we'd both be honoured if you felt inclined to uh, hit that notification bell and subscribe to this channel. It if really does help to us. to do so, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. So, it is from, I used to have a cat, Ted, you may not know that, um, let me find a picture of Ted. This is Ted. No, oh, he's so wonderful. And Ted died on the 20th of October in 2011, but I had him for 12 years, but he only had three legs the last six years due to a traffic accident. Um, but he was absolutely adorable, but when we said in the show the other day, I said, for Mr. A, it's goodbye to Mrs. B. Well, I used to have a cleaner and I used to say to Ted, morning, Mr. T. <laughs> and I used to go, morning, Mr. A. <laughs> Ted speaking to me, she said, I can deal with you saying good morning, Mr. T, but not you answering for him. <laughs> He's brilliant. Uh, Ted was just absolutely brilliant. And black cats are very special. Uh, I feel they're very psychic. He was a prince. He, he had an aura, definitely had some Leo in him. Probably quite a bit of Virgo as well. I think he was a bit of a perfectionist, but <laughs> he just strut. He just, you know, he just strut around the street. He was also an amazing athlete. He would, before he lost his leg, he would just run up the street. Oh, it was just an incredible cat. And we did have such a bond. And uh, for those last six years, he, he really did affect him, but he was mainly on my shoulder. So when I was working, he was always on my shoulder. And uh, yeah, yeah, that gave you a bit of time as well to check out from work and check into him. And animals yeah. can just be so wonderful in that way. You know, have have you had? Um, I don't even like using the word pet because when you have that special bond with an animal, it's it's a love story. Have you got any was love animal story. love stories? The Prince of Beauty, the Black Baron, the Consort of Albertaria. <laughs> Because <laughs> we live in Albert Street. Yeah, he's just Yeah, a babe. he was he was a babe. And he's still very much around. Oh, I can just feel his aura, as I've said before, just so strongly. Mm. But we could, you know, because that veil is thinner today, we could definitely sense um any kind of I can of, feel him smiling. Yeah. We you know, we really could sense those loved ones coming through today. So allowing ourselves to have that imagination, that daydream, maybe even connecting with them a little bit today could be really healing, I feel. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Mrs. A. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. A. So, from the... 18. 18. We haven't quite cracked it. We haven't it. quite cracked it. <laughs> getting there. We're trying. We're trying. It's goodbye from him. And it's goodbye from me. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>